do it that way. It's much easier. Um, so, actually, I'm going to start with 3.6. And then we'll go back to 3.5. Um, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between them, so it's not going to be a, a nice linear pattern through the book. But I will cover all the topics that they talk about in 3.5 and 3.6. Okay. Just not in the order that they come in the book. That's the only thing I'm changing. I'm just going to start in 3 6 and then I'm going to bounce back and forth. So when you get to the notes here, it's in 3 5 or it's in 3 6, one of the two. It's just, I don't see any point in separating because they are very similar. They are very similar. So this is called equivalent statements. And most people do not like these, one way or the other, in order or not. Um, so I'll start off with the easiest of equivalent statements, which is this. Um, it is not true that apples are not red. And violets are not yellow. Remember, logic makes absolutely no sense, no sense whatsoever. So you can pretty much write down anything you want. Alice in Wonderland is death. Okay, so first up, P. Change it into a statement. simple statement and then into symbolic form. So P is... Apples are red. Apples are red. Apples are red. Q is? Violets are yellow. Violet, oh, darn it. Violets yellow. are yellow. Well, we don't care. Well. We're not doing a truth value. Okay. And symbolic form? P. P. Squiggly P. Squiggly P. Is that it? No. No. There's more to it. I need parentheses around this whole thing. Why? It's squiggly. And I need a squiggly out front. Why? It is not true. That is automatically. Squiggly parentheses. So this not is not touching the not P on its own, on its own. And it's definitely not touching the not, not Q. Okay. Let's do a truth table for this, just for the fun of it. Just for the fun of it. These two sections are actually easy if you back up into truth tables all the time, but you can't do that because it takes up, well, a lot of time. So let's start with not P. If we're talking about not P in a four-line truth table, what, what is it? False, false, true, true. False, false, true, true. And not Q? False, true, false, true. False, true, false, true. Okay. And the word in between these two is? And. and so only true when both are true. Both are true. only true when both are true. So that would be down here at the bottom. They're both true. The rest of them must be false. So this is the answer to the inside. But is that the answer to the entire table? No. Because no. we haven't dealt with the negation that it is not true on the outside. So if it's false, 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 true on the inside, it's three trues and a false on the outside. That's the answer to this truth table. So far, so good? That's the answer. That's the answer to the truth table. All right. Let me change my uh, sentence a bit. Um, apples are red or... Violets are yellow. What did I do? Put or. I changed the and into or. What else did I do? Took off not. I took off every not in the entire thing, including it is not true that. Okay. So the P and the Q are exactly the same, 
And the truth table we'll be looking at is P or Q. A very simple truth table. All right. So if we have this P or Q, P is just true, true, false, false. And Q is true, false, true, false. Okay. Key word for or, or words for or? Only false when both are false, which is? The last one. The last one. The rest of them are? True. Okay, or is false. Only and false. True. Only false when both are false for or. Only, only true, true when both are true, true for and. and. Right. Now, here's the cool thing. The answer to this one, the it is not true one, is true, 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 false. The answer to this one over here is also true, 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 true false. They're identical. They're equivalent. They're equivalent. So I can say without a doubt that not, not P um, and not Q is equivalent. Remember, three lines read equivalent. P or Q. That's it. So I guess my next question is this. If I had this, what would it be equivalent to? Negative. Not P. Not P. Or Q. Or Q. No, A. Not Q. And Q. It's the opposite. Oh, okay. Thinking of it like distribution, yes. But is it distribution? No. You no. What law is it? De Morgan's law. Remember De Morgan's law of sets? This is De Morgan's law of logic, which is kind of weird if you think about it. It works for sets, which is elements and you know set notation and all that fun stuff, and it seems to be working with logic, which just doesn't make any sense if there's a correspondence between the two of them. But there is. So De Morgan's law works perfectly fine, and it works exactly like set one. If it didn't have a knot in the beginning, it's going to have a knot in the end. If it had a knot in the beginning, it's going to lose it. One side has a parenthesis with a negation on it, the other side doesn't. So if I start off with P or not Q, and I'm looking for a De Morgan's law equivalent, the left-hand side doesn't have parentheses. So the right-hand side has to have a parentheses with a tilde in front, automatically. And then, this side has P. This side has not P. This side has or. This has and. This has not Q. This side has Q. Woohoo! De Morgan's law is easy, as long as you keep it in symbolic form. So guess what I don't do? I don't put it in symbolic form. I talk about... English, all the way. So let me give you a couple examples of De Morgan's Law and changing it into English. And the uh, equivalences are not necessarily all De Morgan's Law. Other statements can be equivalent and not even touch. I'm so sorry. You like that, No, I don't. <laughs> This is what happens when you go for a little car ride during class. <laughs> Thelma and Louise. <sighs> for example, rewrite using De Morgan's It is not true that today is Tuesday and I did not win the Powerball. It is not true that today is Tuesday and I did not win the Powerball. Now, I'm going to use De Morgan's Law on this to keep this statement meaning exactly the same thing, just written totally different. But they mean exactly the same thing. Okay. So, first up. Today is Tuesday. P. Today 
is Tuesday. Whether it is or not, I don't care. Q? One of our one. I won. The $347 million, I think it was. Someone in Rhode Island won it. $347 million. I won the Powerball. Does that mean we should all start playing? No. <coughs> nope. You have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. Twice. Of course, I'd rather win the Powerball than get struck by lightning. But. All right, what's the next step? Symbolic form. Symbolic form. So it is not true that. Squiggly parentheses. Squiggly on a parentheses. P. Today is Tuesday. P. And squiggly Q. And squiggly, I did not win the Powerball Q. All right. Once you get into symbolic form, it's really easy to change it using De Morgan's Law. This is equivalent to. Squiggly P. Squiggly on the P, not P, or, or Q. Q. Now, on a test, and I'm going to emphasize this because I won't remind you again, this is not your answer. This is the symbolic form of your answer. Guess what I want the answer in? English. English. <coughs> words. Would I write? So, today not P is? Today is, today is not Tuesday. Today is not Tuesday. Or on the Powerball. Or I won the Powerball. I won. And that's what I'm looking for. Ooh. That is De Morgan's Law. Okay. I have a question. Go for it. I, I'm unfortunate. What's your weight? No, you don't race it down. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, question okay. Is. I can use this right here for you now. Yeah. Okay, like you was talking about um, changing this with the more as well. Uh huh. Okay, if it P, it was like P and um, negative Q. Uh huh. Okay, we changed it around. Why would we put the like the squiggly and everything uh, after the parentheses? Out okay. there? Yeah. Because it says it is not true that. That's automatically squiggly parentheses. Yeah, I know that, but I'm saying though, if it was not like, you know, and we were just changing it over. Oh, you want me to go back the other direction? Yeah, I'm saying Hold like on, that's coming. That's coming. That's coming. Yeah. So, when you're writing, when you're putting it in symbolic form, then you go back to the, the English and not the simple statements? Right. Oh, yeah, the simple statements are just simple statements. They're not your sentence. So, do we have to do, we have to do those? I mean, simple statements? I highly suggest it. For us to Write them? actually down? Okay. Yeah, let's put it this way, Jay. Do you want to shortcut that step? I wouldn't. Because that's where most people make their mistakes. Don't shortcut. Stop shortcutting. No. Uh-uh. No more. <laughs> All right. Let's use De Morgan's law to rewrite this. Um, J likes shortcuts. Um, or she won't. Get them right. What them are, I don't know. I just didn't want to go any further with the sentence. Alright, so I have this J like shortcuts or she won't get them right. I want to use De Morgan's law to change this. So start off with simple statements. P. J like shortcuts. J like shortcuts. Q. She will get them right. She will get them right. If her shortcuts work. Uh, okay. So, uh, in symbolic form, the original sentence writes out P, P, P V, v and a negation on Q. I need this to be equivalent to something using the Morgan's Law. No? Before you do anything, this side does not have parentheses. This side desperately needs them. Now, the P becomes not P. This squiggly does not is not taken up by the squiggly on the outside. This is it 
on its own. This is P on one side, it has to be not P on the other side. Or becomes N. Not Q becomes Q. 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 Now, how do I write that in English? It is not true that. It is not true that. J. Not much. And, because it is now and, she will get the warrant. And that would be the English de Morgan's Law statement that is exactly the same as the one above it. Now there's a different flavor to this. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, good. I like calling this one... There's really no title for this other than it's a little strange. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine. Hey, how are you doing? Hello. Can I please see Jeremy Strickland? <laughs> <laughs> you had like a principal calling you to the office. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to take none of that with you. You just lost your badge and I want you to have it. Oh. <laughs> you thought you were in trouble. He's like, what did I do illegal this time? I'm trying to figure out what I did. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I haven't done anything today. It's only Tuesday. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. All right. So this doesn't have any fancy name like um, De Morgan's Law. So I just call it a strange equivalent because. To Morgan's Law, it kind of makes sense if these two statements mean the same thing. The strange equivalence, there's, it's not very obvious that they mean the same thing. For instance, this is equivalent to this. Excuse me. Thank you. See, with De Morgan's Law, it's either a disjunction or it's a conjunction. With the strange equivalence, it's either a conditional or it's a disjunction. Disjunction. And they don't really relate to one another, but these two statements are equivalent, which is kind of cool. So let's do a truth table for both of them just to make sure I'm not going insane. Let's see what happens. If you want, you can get ahead of me and, you know. Create the truth tables. Good right. practice. Uh, let's see. This one is true, true, false, false. This one is true, false, true, false. Might as well do this one. This is false, false, true, true. This one is true, false, true, false. They're two separate truth tables. So whatever the answers are, they should be exactly the same. I'm hoping. Well, at least that's what I'm stating. So let's see here. The first one's a conditional. What am I looking for? True, then false. Which happens where? The second one. Second line. So this one is false. false. The rest of them must be true. True, because it doesn't happen any more than that one's there. This one's a disjunction. Or, and we're looking for false. only false when? False. 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 Which is here, and everybody else is? True. And these two answers are identical. So these statements are equivalent, even though they don't seem like they should be. They you know, just really weird language going on here. So let me give you some simple statements and see what we're talking about. Um, Makes any sense. If the Bulls win, then the Hornets will, won't make the or will not make the playoffs. I really should say it that way. Will not. I'm not sure if won't is a very good English statement. Will not make the playoffs. 
All right, so this is my statement. First set. P and Q, simple statements. P, Q. What's P? Bulls win. Hornets play off. Hornets make playoffs. Okay, so those are my simple statements. How do I write the original sentence in symbolic form? P, P, P arrow, arrow, Q, squiggly, Q. Q. I want to write the equivalent statement using this really strange equivalence over here. So we have to kind of see what kind of patterns are going on. This is the conditional side, so we're looking at the left over here. What happens to the P as it moves through the equivalent? It becomes dotted. What happens to the Q? It becomes It stays the same. So one's changing and the other one is staying the same. The conditional is turning into a disjunction. So P changes, Q doesn't. P changes, Q doesn't. So P changes, so over here this is going to be squiggly P or Squiggly Q. The second part doesn't, so squiggly Q. So let's write that in English. Not P. The Bulls did not win. Or the Hornets did not make, I don't know. The playoffs. These two sentences, the two of the black sentences, mean exactly the same thing. But they're totally, it doesn't seem like they do. It doesn't make any sense. But by their truth tables, by their equivalents, they have to mean exactly the same thing. So if the Bulls win, then the Hornets make the play will not make the playoffs. It means the same thing as the Bulls did not win or the Hornets did not make the playoffs. Correction. Um, Mary is at home, or Paul is not working. But I want to use the strange equivalence to rewrite this sentence. We're starting on the right hand side of it and moving to the left. But the pattern stays exactly the same. So let's see here. P. Mary, Mary is home. Q. Paul is working. Paul is working. Symbolic form. P, V, V, P, v squiggly Q. Now under the strange equivalence the first position changes, the second position stays the same. So if the first position changes, this becomes squiggly P, arrow, squiggly Q. The first position changes, the second one stays the same. So how do I read the second sentence, the second statement there? Mary is not home. Mary is not home. Then Paul is not working. And we're done. Okay. So, so far, De Morgan's Law and Strange Equivalents. Next up is what's called the Conditional Equivalences. Besides the strange one. Conditional equivalences. Two simple statements. 
number is divisible by 4, a number is divisible by 2. I don't want to do truth tables for all of these because it takes up way too much space, so we're going to just kind of think our way through it. Here are the possibilities. P arrow Q, um, Q arrow P, not P arrow not Q, and not Q arrow not P. Okay. Those are what? These are the conditional equivalences. Now they're not all equivalent to each other, but there are pairs that are equivalent within this. What's that? Which one? What's, the, what's that in the blue? Right here? Yeah, all of it. If P, then Q. If Q, then P. If not P, then not Q. If not Q, then not P. I'll write and say it in English in a second with, you know, divisible by 4, divisible by 2. Okay, ready? Where do they come from? That's all the possible conditionals I can come up with. With P and Q. Um, but I'm not mixing and matching them. They're either both positive or they're both <coughs> negative. Uh, and I'll give them names in a second. So let's start off with, well, let's just give them names right now. This one, top one is called the conditional. The next one is called the uh, converse. The next one is called the inverse. And the last one is called the contrapositive. Ugly word. I think there's only one S in positive. Why? Okay, now, when we say converse, it's the converse of the conditional, inverse of the conditional, or contrapositive of the conditional. So the conditional on its own has to be given, then you can find its converse, its inverse, and its contrapositive. Alright, so let's use my little statements here. If a number is divisible by 4, then it is also divisible by 2. True or false? True. 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 Guaranteed, without a doubt, that statement is... Uh, oh, let's do it in black. True. Okay. If a number is divisible by 2, then it is also divisible by 4. False. False. What number divisible by 2 is not divisible by 4? 10. 10, 6, anything like that. So we're going to just consider that statement false. I'm not going through all the possibilities. I'm just dealing with two possibilities. If a number is not divisible by 4, then it is not divisible by 2. That's false, because we can use 6 again, and it is divisible by 2. If a number is not divisible by 2, then it is not divisible by 4. If you're not divisible by 2, you're guaranteed to be not even. If you're not even, can you be divisible by 4? No. No. That statement is actually true. So the statements that are equivalent here, the shortcut method, is your conditional is equivalent to your contrapositive, and your converse is equivalent to your inverse. Those are the only two statements that are equivalent here. But even if you look at it the right way, the only things that are equivalent are contrapositives. Are contrapositives. What makes a contrapositive? Well, you take the two letters and you flip their order and you change both of them. So if I take this one and I flip their order and change both of them, that's still a contrapositive. So contrapositive is the one that is um, equivalent. The biggest mistake in most mathematics is taking an if-then statement and saying that the converse is also true, when most of the time it is false. So that's where most people make their mistakes. All right, how am I going to write this on a test? Find the converse of if rain is cold, then... It is not snow. That's what I'll ask. Now, one thing to notice. 
There are three possible things I could ask. I'm only going to ask two. one. Because I have to give you the conditional, so that leaves me the converse, inverse, or contrapositive. So you can't just memorize the order of these things. You have to know what each one of them actually does. So if I'm asking for the converse of the statement, your first step is still P, Q. What's P? Brain is cold. Q? It is snow. It is snow. Okay. And then after you write it in symbolic form, or a simple statement, you write it in symbolic form, which is, if the rain is cold, arrow, then not. it is not Q, snow. So we want to just transmute this. These are not equivalent statements necessarily. This is what's called a transmutation. That's the condition. This is the conditional. So, so when we first write it, it would, that would always be, always be the conditional form? Uh-huh. You have to be given the conditional. You have to be. You so can't do anything without a conditional. Symbolic basically means conditional. No. I gave you the conditional up here. If it is rain, then it is not soon. That's a conditional. When you write it in symbolic form, that's the symbolic form of the conditional. Does it have to be back out? Huh? You, you put it in symbolic form, it means the conditional. Yes, it's the original statement in symbolic form. Uh, no, but I'm just putting it there for a reason, to keep it kind of separate. Now, I'm not going to say this is equivalent to its converse. I'm just going to say, what is its converse? So what is the converse of P arrow, not Q? What's a converse do? Flip. Takes the two letters and just flips them. So the converse of that thing over there is going to be squiggly Q. Arrow, P. And no, you don't need the parentheses. I'm just grouping them. Keep them separate from one another. So how do I write the blue statement, the blue symbolic form, of the original sentence? If it is not snow. If it is not snow. If it is If it. If. Well, leave it alone. It is not snow, not very good English, then the rain is cold. This is the converse of the original sentence. It is the converse of the original sentence. That's it. What have I seen people do? Flip it wrong. Then it is not snow if the rain is cold. Is that a converse? <laughs> they took the entire thing and just Flipped it, but you can't flip the if or the mm -hmm. then. They have to stay in place. So what do you want to see in that answer on the test? Just the that green sentence. The English sentence. That's what I'm looking for, but I highly suggest you do everything else up there, too. I ain't saying that. I ain't saying I'm not going to do it. I'm saying what I, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. saying this is the answer. This is the answer. Yeah, so what But to get to the right answer, I highly suggest you do the rest of it. I'm going to. I'm just saying what do you want <laughs> to say. On my test, say? it'll say... Here's a statement, write me the conditional. <coughs> I'm sorry, write me the converse. And that's what I'm looking for. I am not looking for the blue writing. Yeah, the I, that would be symbolic form of the converse. Okay, so. So. So what you say? Well, hold on, let Jay talk. <laughs> it just takes her a little while. The inverse. I haven't done the inverse yet. No, I'm, I'm going to do one. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. 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 Contrapositive, you flip it and swap it. Uh -huh. With one, you just flip it. Uh -huh. With the other, you swap it. Uh -huh. Change it. Change swap. Ah, yeah. oh, if... Uh, today is Wednesday. Wednesday. Then... I am not rich. Is you rich? Find or write the contra positive of the second.
Pete. Today is Wednesday, and I am rich. Wednesday. I have to say it phonically. Wednesday. Symbolic form? P, arrow, not Q. P, arrow, not Q. If I'm going to make this the contrapositive of P, arrow, not Q, what is it going to become? Q, arrow, not P. What is it? Q, Q arrow, not P. Because the contrapositive, you take the two statements and you flip them around and you change what they were. So where this one was not Q, it gets into the first position as a plain old Q. And where this was P, it goes into the second position, but as not P. So that's its contrapositive. And then you just write it in English. If I am rich, I am rich, then today is not wetness day. I always wondered why there was a D in Wednesday. You don't say it. Wednesday. Wednesday. All right, that leaves one last topic. And I'm not going to be able to do all of it, but I can do some of it. Negations. Q is yeah. men. If I'm going to negate this, I first have to write it in simple statements. So P is mice, or um, Q is men. Now, how do I negate the sentence? Not, not I put a not in front of it, and I put it inside of parentheses. So now, when I put these here, I have changed my simple statement to its negation. So the simple statement is P or Q. By putting the not out front, I am negating the entire thing. These are not equivalent anymore. We're changing a statement. So what happens when I change this statement? What law can I use? De Morgan's. What's it become? Uh, P. Not, P. not P. And, and not, Q. not Q. So the negation of mice or men is not mice and not men. And that would be the negation of mice or men. Another way of saying that, of course, would be neither mice nor men. So, so the blue bar, that's just a step? That's just the symbolic form of the original statement. But I'm trying to negate it. So I negate the whole thing. That's the green stuff. The green stuff you negate. What if I have um, negate? If we are done, then we can go. Yes. Ah, but I need to negate it. <laughs> I need to negate it. So, shortcut. We are done is uh, P. We can go is Q. This is P arrow Q, right? If we are done, then we can go but I want to negate it. So I need to take this whole sentence and put a parenthesis around it and negate it. There's a problem now. I don't know how to negate a conditional. All I can negate is a uh, converse, I'm sorry, no, a disjunction or a conjunction, an and or an or. So is there any law that allows me to change an if then into an and or an or? No. Yes. Yeah. What's it called? It's that strange equivalence. So I need to use a strange equivalence first before I can get this done. So this not is still going to stay out here. I haven't worked with it yet. 
But what's the strange equivalence on P arrow Q? Not, not P. Not P. Or, or Q. Q. The first one changes, the second one stays the same. the same. But now I have this not on a disjunction. How do I write a not on a disjunction? What's it equivalent to? P, P and, not Q. and not Q. So the negation of if we are done, then we can go would be we are done we cannot and, we cannot go. and we cannot go. We are done and still can't go. And that would be the negation of the original sentence. Kind of cool, huh? We went from an if then to an and. Went from an if then to an and. So that's the possibilities of negation. It usually uses De Morgan's law in one fashion or form. All right, homework. Homework, homework. And uh, don't leave.